Well, when Kevin first approached me about the uh, locations for Wind at My Back, um, it was sort of a daunting task because the show was all set in the Depression in the 1930s in a small rural town, and uh, we, of course, were based in, in Toronto. So ultimately, after exhausting locations that were within the Toronto area, I sort of had to look more further afield. And uh, I found a lot of really interesting locations in the uh, east of Toronto, uh, places like Bowmanville and Orono. Those two towns basically comprised a big portion of the, the locations for the first season of the show. Specifically, the Bailey House was the Bowmanville Museum. Everyone at the Bowmanville Museum was, was really great about the whole experience. It wasn't just like a, a shooting a feature film where you would go in there, you were there for two days, and then you would leave. This was sort of like, okay, well, this is an ongoing series, so we're going to be here for three days this week, and then we're going to be here for four days the next week, and places like the Bowmanville Museum, which is open to the public, or in season one, the, the, the town of New Bedford was actually the town of Orono. And shopkeepers and the residents in, in Orono were, were really fabulous because you know, we would lock up their whole town for sometimes like four or five days in a, in a stretch. And then we would say, oh, by the way, we're coming back to do this again two weeks from now. We were, we were able to kind of make that all happen, but it was draining on the crew because we were traveling each way an, an hour to get to locations and because the first few episodes were, were what we call block shot because we didn't have the, the sets built in the studio yet and we wanted to film all of the exterior locations while we had decent weather. So we wound up shooting six episodes, all of the exteriors, all in one stretch. So, you know, that was challenging for the directors, for the actors, for everybody, because, you know, we would be shooting a scene from episode six in the morning, and then we would be shooting, you know, scenes from episode nine in the afternoon. So it became sort of difficult to keep track of, but it, in the end, it all worked out. One of my favorite locations, and, and it was funny, because it, it's not even a, just a location for Wind at My Back. We, we originally had used it on Road to Avonlea. It's called Brookdale Pond, which is near a town called Uxbridge. And that location, uh, to me, sort of became um, very sort of iconic. There's a, a scene in the first one or two episodes of Wind Up My Back where the two boys run away and they go to stay at, uh, at the family cabin. And they're kind of on their own and roughing it and they're fishing. And, and that location with the pond and the, and the, you know, the white house, you know, really sold the, the period and sold the location. And it was just a very idyllic and attractive location as well. And I think just in general, um, the Bowmanville Museum, that building became a real symbol of the show, you know, that sort of symbol of the, of the Bailey's stature in the town. And that house compared to many of the other houses, you know, really sort of, you know, set them apart in terms of their, their status and their, and their wealth and their, you know, position in the community. The back lot essentially came about um, not so much because we felt that, that uh, the townspeople um, in, the, in the, uh, the practical locations that we shot at didn't want us anymore. It, it really became a, a, an issue of practicality. Because the, the town of New Bedford becomes a character unto itself, and you really want to establish familiar places where people go on a regular basis and, and, and be able to shoot those locations without having to worry about police control or pedestrian walk-bys. And, and to try to meet the, the schedule that we had, it was very helpful uh, to be able to just walk outside of our studio and shoot all of our street stuff or shoot the alley or shoot the gazebo or shoot the train station or whatever the case may be, even the mine was uh, shot on the back lot location. So it gave directors um, and it also gave the writers as well uh, an opportunity to, to write things uh, in, a, in a contained environment that would be achievable on any given day. And that was really the goal, was to try to give the show uh, an authentic period quality in its, in its look and production value without having to travel for you know, hours at a time to get there. The logistics of actually putting up the back lot when it first happened, was, it, was, it was a big job, uh, a big construction job, big design job. 
trying to make it flexible, trying to make an environment that was uh, shootable in 360 degrees, which was ultimately the goal. And, and the back lot is in the middle of, of Scarborough, which is, you know, a very urban area. Trying to build these facades so that they worked practically was also an interesting challenge because the way the streets are laid out, it looks like the cars go around the corner and then could be going off into the distance. But in reality, they just go around the corner and stop. Um, and I think, you know, the directors and everybody who worked in the show did a really good job of staging the cars going back and forth and staging the extras disappearing and, and appearing so that the town felt like it went on and on and on rather than just being a facade in the middle of Scarborough. Practically, we would then, of course, have to connect the exterior facades with the interior sets. So, for instance, the New Bedford Hotel, we had essentially just like a, a five-foot section where somebody shooting exterior could walk into the door and then cut. And then as soon as the scene would be picked up on the inside, we had a whole New Bedford Hotel set which the continuation of the scene would happen in there. So there was lots of tricks that were incorporated to, you know, to give the illusion that these buildings that were in the town of New Bedford actually had interiors, but they really didn't. The overall look of the show, um, in terms of the locations and, and as production design in general, I think it was really important to sell the era that the show was taking place in. It was, it was the depression, it was you know a time where people struggled, it was a time where there wasn't a lot of wealth and prosperity. We sort of had to be very careful about how these buildings were portrayed because otherwise we weren't staying true to the period. And that was one of the reasons why we also wanted to build a back lot because we were able to make it look more depressed than if we were to go on a practical location and, and have to take an actual working store and we have to remove all of their modern things like light fixtures and product from their windows and everything and, and then replace it all with our set pieces and mask all of, all of the modern um, fixtures so that it actually looks like it's period. With the back lot, we were able to design the set, build the set, dress the set so that it stayed exactly the way you wanted it to be for the entire show which was a, a great benefit to the overall look of the show um, to give it that, that, that real sense of authenticity of the period.